Hello and welcome to this first tutorial of a series of tutorials where Velux will assist you to simulate natural ventilation in different building energy simulation software. In this tutorial, you will find a quick introduction to natural ventilation, an overview of the inputs needed to simulate natural ventilation in a building energy simulation software, a step-by-step -step guide on how to evaluate natural ventilation in Ida ICE. Natural ventilation can act as a free natural cooling source that can reduce overheating while saving energy in buildings. However, often mistakes in the design stage simulations lead to various problems during the building's operation, such as insufficient fresh air provided to the indoor environment. Let's first have a look at the natural forces at play which drive natural ventilation. Natural ventilation is regulated by the pressure differences between inside and outside. These differences are mainly induced by two phenomena. The first one is wind, which creates positive pressure on the exposed facade and negative pressure on the opposite facade. The other one is the difference in temperature in the building, causing thermal buoyancy, allowing the denser and cold air to lift warmer air up and out of the building. Depending on the number and location of the openings, several natural ventilation effects can take place in a building. Single-sided ventilation occurs when all the windows or doors that are open are located on the same external facade. Cross-ventilation occurs when windows or doors that are open are located on more than one external facade. Stack ventilation, also known as chimney effect, occurs by having vertical distances between the inlet and outlet openings, enhancing the buoyancy effect. Combined ventilation is when cross ventilation and stack effect occur simultaneously. Now let's dive into the software IDA ICE. Firstly, we created a quite simple model. As you can see, it is a two story building with two zones on the ground floor and one zone on the upper floor. This model includes both windows and internal doors. If you intend to simulate natural ventilation and airflow movements between the ground and upper floor, a horizontal large opening to simulate the stairs will be your solution. After having looked at the model, we will dive into the main inputs that are relevant for the simulation of natural ventilation. Wind profile or wind correction factors. Infiltration pressure coefficients, and lastly, the opening control strategy. So let's start with the first one, the wind profile or wind correction factors. First of all, you need to import a climate weather file, which provides the wind speed at the height of 10 meters. The wind pressure at different heights can be determined by the terrain type, which categorizes the airflow behavior between buildings. From the drop-down menu, you can load wind profiles from a database. The different wind profiles are provided by ASHRAE. From this image on the right, you can see different examples of wind profiles that show the difference of the wind speed gradient based on the surroundings. So you can choose a wind profile depending on the site context. For example, let's choose Open Country, and by pressing OK, the new wind profile is set. Further details, references, and description can be found below in the descriptions of the video. The next element that needs our attention is infiltration. Infiltration can be defined in two different ways, wind-driven or fixed infiltration. The fixed infiltration is a simplified mode, which assumes a nearly constant air exchange between indoors and outdoors through the construction, independently from the wind conditions. In reality, infiltration is driven by wind pressure, and therefore, the wind-driven mode is a more realistic option to calculate it. In this case, the program will calculate the air exchange rate through the construction depending on the wind conditions at each time step. To do so, you need to set the air tightness of the building, which is usually given by an air change rate at a given pressure difference, often 50 pascal, between indoors and outdoors. If you have carried out a blower door test on your building, you can input the results here. Otherwise, the following table provides infiltration rate values measured in air change per hour at 50 pascal according to the construction period. 
In case you would prefer to use the fixed infiltration mode, an important note is that it is calculated at 4 Pascal of pressure difference. So, if you have the infiltration rate at 50 Pascal, a good approximation over the year is to divide this value by 20. It can be an input here. You can find more information on the calculation method and why to choose this value in the cited reference in the description below. Summing up, it is highly recommended to use the wind-driven infiltration. It is more accurate and the simulation time does not increase much by choosing it. After having specified the wind profile and the leakiness of the building, we need to define the pressure difference between indoors and outdoors through the immediate surroundings of the building. To do this, we will introduce the most relevant input, the pressure coefficients. Without them, the airflow through the building is not realistically calculated. Their purpose can be explained through these images. When the wind blows in one direction, it causes a positive pressure on the exposed wall, which is called the windward wall, and negative pressure on the opposite wall, the leeward wall. The pressure coefficients represent this effect, which depends on the building orientation, layout, and how exposed the building is to wind. There are three different exposure classes, exposed, semi-exposed, and sheltered. Exposed is when the building is not surrounded by any relevant obstructions. Semi-exposed is when the building is surrounded by obstructions with a height close to half of the height of the building. Sheltered is when the building is surrounded by obstructions with at least the same height as the building. Now, let's go back to the software. By using the autofill button, you can choose between three different exposure classes according to the building's location and Ida Ice will determine the pressure coefficients automatically. No need to change them manually. For example, if you choose the exposed situation, you get higher pressure coefficient values leading to higher wind-driven airflows compared to the other options. Now, let's look at the last input needed to simulate natural ventilation, the opening settings for windows and doors. So, let's go to the 3D tab. The external door is not commonly used to circulate air, so in this case, we will put never open in the opening schedule. You can also define it as always open or to a set schedule. These options are also relevant for internal doors. The leak area and CD factor or discharge coefficient are the relevant elements to simulate natural ventilation through the doors. If you don't have manufacturer data regarding the leak area, keep the default values. Regarding the CD factor, it depends on the geometry of the openings, but the default value will be just fine. To allow the stack effect and airflow movements between the zones, we modeled our staircase as a large horizontal opening without a door. There is no need for changes here. Now, let's move on to the windows. From what we can see on the palette on the left, it is possible to add two different types of windows, window and window detailed. There are no sensible differences between these two window types regarding the simulation of natural ventilation in buildings of this size. There would be differences in the case of simulating high-rise buildings. But let's have a look at the opening control strategies. This is the interface of the window. The first inputs are not of interest for the simulation of natural ventilation. The ones that are relevant are under opening. From what we can see here in the control, there are different modes. Never open, used for example for the entrance door. Always open, used for example for the internal door. Schedule. This is what we will use in this tutorial. PI temperature control. The windows will open according to a temperature threshold. PI temperature control and schedule. The windows will open as the previous one, but also according to an active schedule. We will set a schedule opening control to model a ventilative cooling strategy where occupants open the windows during summer evenings to cool the building. Looking at this schedule, we set the windows to be open from 8 to 10 p.m. from the beginning of May till the end of September. 
We also have the option to set how much the window can be open by clicking on More. There are two relevant inputs, Max Relative Width and Max Relative Height. These values give the percentage of the window's width and height that is operable. No window can be open 100%, so we recommend you to check the actual operability values for the windows in the manufacturer's data. On the right, you can see some examples for the most common sizes of Velux roof windows. These values may vary a lot for facade windows, depending on type and manufacturer. But for this model, a center pivot MK06 was used with a remote opening control strategy. We put 95% as a max relative height and 32% as a max relative width, so that by multiplying them, we get an opening of maximum 30.4% according to the table. Then we press OK. The schedule we designed applies to three roof windows as well as the facade window on the ground floor. Finally, under the General tab, we open the System Parameters window, where we set the last important information. Here we can set the degree of automatic schedule smoothing which represents the delay or latency of the window opening with respect to the opening control signal. If it's zero, we don't have any delay. If it's five, it shifts the window opening schedule by plus or minus one hour. For this tutorial, we put a value of two. If you want to simulate a short window opening schedule, you could reduce this value, but a reduction of this value will increase the simulation time. Let's go to the Simulation tab and click on Requested Output. Here we can choose the simulation outputs. To evaluate the effects of natural ventilation, we need to flag different outputs, such as Fangas Comfort, Indoor Air Quality, Airflow in Zone, and Thermal Comfort without cooling. In this way, we can look at their results and investigate their effect on natural ventilation. Now let's run the simulation. After the simulation is completed, we can go to Details and investigate the results. The main focus of our investigation is airflow in zone and the main temperatures. These values show how much heat can be removed and how the indoor climate conditions can be improved. If we go to airflow in zone and investigate what happens in the week from the 11th of July till the 17th of July, we can see the peaks of the airflow when the windows are open. According to the main temperature chart, this window opening strategy permits to cool down the building significantly on warm nights. For example, on Wednesday, the indoor temperature dropped from around 25 degrees before the windows open to 22 degrees the next morning. So thanks to a simple simulation, you can demonstrate the ability of your natural ventilation strategy to improve thermal comfort in summer. Thanks for your attention.